Okay, so now that we've covered some of the real basics, it's probably worthwhile to discuss a few more common terms. You'll often hear risk managers speak in terms of inherent and residual risk. Inherent risk is the level of risk that would occur if you were not doing anything to try to manage or control it. A great example of this is cybersecurity. If we didn't have the firewalls and other good security practices, I think we all understand that the default level of risk that is inherent <laughs> to, to being on the internet is really high. So you know, in insecurity, you know, we're usually already doing things to try to manage or lower the risk. You know, we have our firewalls and our other protections. We call these activities controls or risk mitigations. Now they can be processes, technologies, or services that we use. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the risk that's left over after we consider our mitigations is called the residual risk. Now in our security example, we've got our firewalls and our other protections, but we still understand that there is still a risk that remains when we're using the internet. I should say that some business people can get confused when trying to assess inherent risk in practical terms. Sometimes it can be hard to imagine a situation without the controls that you have already have in place. And so you'll sometimes see organizations start with residual risk only when they're introducing risk assessments. And this is a legitimate approach. Um, but that said, you know, inherent risk is a best or doing inherent risk is a best practice, and it's often worth including even if you end up doing it at a later phase. And we'll touch on this a little more uh, later in our discussion today. Now, in some cases, we might decide the level of residual risk is too high and that we should take more steps to lower the risk further. In this case, there's a lower level of risk that we might wanna to get to for a given item, and we would call this our target risk level. 